You don't need to restart. Why? Right. Or two on. Right, see, uh, we, I have been, this last week or two, we have been talking about, uh, right, okay, I don't, I don't want to go all over again, but in the day of trouble, see, I'll give you an example. As, uh, uh, a lot of people today, if the, the church has taught people, if they're in bother, go to certain people. The Bible teaches different. So what are you going to do in the day of trouble? Well, the Bible teaches in the day of trouble, call upon me. Mm -hmm. Now that's Psalm 50, verse 15 and 16. Well, if you read that, and are you, can you throw her up, Derek? No. Psalm 50. Psalm 50. I'm not going to go over it again. I just want, I just want you. Psalm 50, verse 15 and 16. I think years ago I got a revelation. The Lord's my caretaker. Mm -hmm. So every problem I have in life. I take everything to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Ross, everybody else will tell you, you go to so-and-so, or you go to so-and-so, they have a ministry of counselling. Well, I don't know, but we show this. Psalm 50, verse 15 and 16. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Mm -hmm. So you glorify God when you, in the day of trouble, you come to him. And I will deliver you. Who Who's he going to deliver? The one who calls upon him. Well, if you want to, most of the people that would turn and tell you, well, I go to so-and-so, he's a counsellor, and he's this and that and other thing. No, but listen, the majority of us have switched off right now. What well, I've said that, they've switched off. Because they're taught different. Please. In the day of trouble, now, listen, next verse, but unto the wicked, what hast thou to declare my statutes, or that thou should take my covenant in thy mouth? So I have a right to take God's covenant, and I go to Him with all my problems, and I glorify Him. Now, we tell you this. I don't want to go on this too much from taping this. Here's the key. I learned that, in another situation in my life, I take it to the Lord. Now listen, you might think you're going through problems. You have never went through the things I've went through. I have went through. I'm not stuck in them. Mm -hmm. I'm not stuck in the problems. I haven't through them all. Now, I know it sounds, you think, who do you think you are? All I'm just saying, that that's the revelation I got. In the day of trouble, when people are saying things about you and talking about you, what are you going to do? When people are criticising you, behind backs, and you need to pull things at your back, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Ah, but you haven't, you haven't been taught that. You haven't been taught that. You've been taught these other things. Right. If you go to Jeremiah 33, quickly to verse 3. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. In the day of trouble, call upon me and I will answer thee. What will he do? Who, who will he do? He'll answer those who call upon him. Now, call upon me and I will answer thee and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. This is all right, but listen, there's such a thing as you come into problems in life later on. If you, you need a wise and discern what, what to do. And once you see this here, you realise you bypass everywhere, you go directly to God. And see if you go that, call upon me and I will answer you. So when I call upon the Lord, what does he do? He delivers me and what else does he do? He answers me. Am I wrong to say that? So what have we been taught? What are we teaching everybody else to do? Right? And off my head, maybe uh, Psalm 27 verse 5. Now that's, listen, I will answer you. God will answer you. If you go directly and ask him. And in your heart you believe what I'm saying. Not, you're hearing it, oh, but I don't believe that. I believe the other, but that's okay. No, it works here. Go to Psalm 27 verse 5. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me. Mm -hmm. Where? In his pavilion. That's the secret place. There's a thing, the Bible talks about in the, the Psalm 91, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. 
So there's, there's a secret place, but it's only for those who call upon the Lord. And the secret place only works for those who know that revelation and apply it. Right? So call upon me. <clears throat> in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in the secret of his tabernacle and shall hide me and he shall set me upon a rock. What does it mean to be hidden? Psalm 83 verse 3. I'm just going off over this in a minute. Psalm 83 verse 3. You read this. That's a nice heading to that psalm now. There is my light and my salvation. Mm-hmm. Look. They have crafty counsel against thy people and consult against thy... Who's them boys? Mm-hmm. Who's them? Could I ask you a question? Are you heading one? Yeah. Right, you, that's you need to find out and how to find that. And this is, you know, as a young believer, you need to learn certain things. And could I tell you this? Everybody wants to tie and input their what they believe unto you. But here's the key: I want to take you, and I want you, the Lord, to learn you, mm-hmm. and the Lord to take you, and the Lord to disciple you. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Now, listen, that there's really. I went into a, shop, a, a charity shop one day and this girl was talking. I says, tell me this, are you a hidden one? And she looks at me, where do you get that in the Bible? And I showed her. She says, my goodness, I've never seen that before. Mm-hmm. Right, see, in a day of trouble, what's God is going to do is going to hide me in the secret of his pavilion. Why, do, why, would, why would he do that? Protect him, protect him. Uh, why would he do it? Because you call him in a time of trouble. Mm-hmm. But we haven't taught the children of God to do that. Have we? No. Now, wait, wait, see, this week, I was reading a wee verse, and it's come into my mind here. Oh, dear. It's Psalm 94. See, when your heart's way down with all problems, not that most of us don't have it, see, when your heart's way down, what are you going to do? Right. Be anxious for... But in everything, by prayer and supplication, make your request known unto the counsellor. The counsellor. That's what everybody's taught. Let's see, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind. So what's going to guard your heart and mind? When you're anxious for nothing, you need to give them to the Lord. And you tell him, you pour out your heart to him. Lord, you know what's going on. You know this and you know that. And all of a sudden, the peace of God that passes on understanding will guard your heart and mind. Listen, this is like reading something in the back of your mind. That sounds good, but it's not possible. That's most of what I would say. Well, it's this wee verse here. If I can see this now. Go up to maybe 11 or 12 or 13. Right. I don't stop there. Blessed is the man whom the Lord, whom thou hast chastened, O Lord, and teaches him out of thy law. Blessed is the man that thou chastens. So there's a C there. Remember, it's talking last Sunday about chastening. Remember? Now I've never seen this verse. Blessed is the man that God chastens. Blessed is the woman that God chastens. Right? And teaches them out of thy law. What for? Next verse. That thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity. What does that mean? Do you mean to say there's a people here of God? We're taking just, we're a people of God who can find the rest of God in the days of adversity. But I tell you, yes, most of us have never found that. It's when the problems in life come along. And then we haven't the character to do the things we're trying to show here. And that character hasn't been honest. And that day's of adversity. Finish us it. Again. Blessed is the man whom thou hast chastened, O Lord, and teaches. So who, who does God teach? The one he chastens. That thou mayest give him rest, Jason Bob, from the days of verity. Right? Tell me this. 
See here, there's... Uh, listen, we have been talking... I'm trying to go this quick. We have been talking for eight weeks, call. Right, and I've been telling you this morning, I learned... Or this evening, I learned everything. I commit everything to the Lord. My my wife, my family, all my children, everything. And here, everybody here, every I commit them to the Lord. I trust him. What does it mean to trust? What does it mean to trust? Ah, but what does it mean? Tell me this, when you lose somebody's trust, what happens? What happens? You've no confidence in them. Right? Now I'll ask it away. Commit thy ways, trust also in him. Psalm 37. Psalm 37, verse 5 and 6. Listen. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So here we have call. Now once you get a revelation, I have a covenant to go to God and I can call upon him. I'm going to tell you this. Next thing is, I know now that I commit everything to God. And I trust him. Now that's an experience. A few starting to experience God and you know it's going nowhere else. He's faithful. And what you commit to him, it's not doing a world tour. It's not going down the, the, book, the phone and everybody's hearing about it. And you can cut, commit and trust him with it. And what happens? And he shall bring it to pass. Mm-hmm. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and, as the, and thy judgment as the noonday. Now listen, I've been trying to tell you this, there's such a thing as committing your ways over the years, committing your works. Committing your soul. There's verses for every one of them. But here's this. Most, could I tell you this in all honesty? I learned years ago as a young Christian and I went to this man. He was a counsellor. And I thought I'd have to go and say things for the things weighing me down. And he came in talking to me in here. And all of a sudden he started to tell me all these things he was to- talking to people about. And he was telling me all these things that the people had committed to him. Well, I'll tell you, I just sort of lost. I'm not going there. There's no way I'm going there. Now, we hear this. Next morning, I open my Bible. Isaiah 9, verse 6. Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born... Isaiah 9 verse 6 Unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and in his name shall be called the Wonderful Counselor. And that morning I met the Wonderful Counselor. And that's talking there about the Lord Jesus Christ being born as a babe. See out there now. Am I wrong to say the Lord's my counselor? And I call upon him and I commit everything to him. I know what you think. Tell me this. Can you go to some people and commit stuff to them? Can you trust them with it? No. Well, there you are. You can go to the Lord with it. Now, this is foreign to the body of Christ. This is totally foreign. And here's the key I learned. The Lord's my caretaker. But he's only my caretaker. And people normally be sick of me hearing this. He's only my caretaker if I give him to him. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing, be anxious for nothing, but in everything give all your cares to the Lord and tell them. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind. So here's the key, I learned this, the Lord's my caretaker. I mean it, casting all your care upon him, First Peter 5 verse 7. Now, I really want to go on, for I've been doing this for two or three weeks. And you really need to know them, them secrets there. You hear the next one. Call, commit, confess. Confess what? It's not Jesus anymore. It's the Lord Jesus. After he rose from the dead, he's now the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not Jesus. Now that's a, that's a teaching on its own. And that's a war. 
Because everybody out here is preaching Jesus, Jesus. And I preached it. But you see, when you see the Bible, all right, what is this? Acts 2, verse 38. Acts 2, verse 38. Then Peter said, no, Acts 2.36, Therefore all the house of Israel know surely that God has made that same Jesus, whom you crucified. Who is he? The Jesus you crucified is now Lord and Christ. And from that, after he ascended, he's now the, and resurrected and ascended, he's the Lord Jesus Christ. And see if you can get the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ and start confessing the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've been trying to show you here what happens. What, does any of you know what happens? You're you're honored. Honored. Huh? You're an honour to the Lord. Pardon? You what? You give an honour to him. Yeah, well that's calling upon the Lord. Watch this. Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33. Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33. Am I going too heavy? I'm going too quick. Okay. Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, now it's made right, and that's the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Him will I confess before the... So here's the key. If I confess the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ goes and confesses me before the Father. What does he do? Confess. If I deny the Lord Jesus Christ, he denies me before the Father. That makes sense here now. Now watch this feedback. Luke 12, verse 8 and 9, maybe. That's roughly right. Luke 12, verse 8 and 9. Roughly. Right. Okay. Also, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the... Who's he confessing before? Angels. Angels. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question? Are you confessing the Lord Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Has the Lord Jesus confessing you before the angels? Is your angels working? <laughs> See? Can I tell you this? Nobody had ever told me that. I got a revelation on Can I ask you a question then? When you're running in problems, is ministering angels working for you? They will operate. Am I right to say they operate when you confess the Lord Jesus Christ? I say, Whosoever shall confess me before him shall the Son of Man confess before the angels, but he that denieth me shall be denied before the. Now I remember telling you, Paul, commit, get the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ and start confessing him. Now listen. So a little child learning these things just take your time and just see these things and write them out and get the revelation and try to walk on what you see does that all make sense sir? does that all make sense? Mm -hmm. now am I wrong to say I get a revelation is the Lord Jesus Christ and you just hear me this but tell me this how many, how many speak in that? Why do, why do I speak the revelation of the Lord Jesus? why do I speak it? Uh, but, no, but why do I speak it? No, because the Lord Jesus Christ is going with the Father and confessing, Holy Spirit is confessing you before yeah. everybody. Yeah. And now he goes and confesses you before the Father. And then he goes and confesses you before the angels. And what do you think my angels do? Well, they're not safe. What? They're not safe. And if you haven't that revelation, what are your angels doing? Here's what they're doing. Sitting in advance. Doing nothing. I've been trying to tell people it's two or three weeks, three or four weeks, call in the day of trouble, can commit everything, and learn to confess. And last Sunday I was telling you, here's three or four things don't do. We're new creations. Do not condemn anyone. Do not judge anyone. Do not criticise anyone. Because you're working in the old covenant. And you don't realise it, but 
Whatever way you judge someone is the way you're going to be judged. All right. Matthew 7, verse 1. Matthew 7, verse 1. Judge not, that ye be not judged. Judge in others, love. No, good heaven. If you judge not, what will happen to you? But if you judge, what will happen to you? Why will you be judged? Right. How many is judging? How many in the body of Christ is judging? How many people is condemning? Right. For with the same judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with the measure you meet, it be measured to you. Now, but you don't understand what they've done to me. But see, we're new creations. And the new covenant, we have to learn to forgive. Mm-hmm. And not judge. Not condemn. Not criticise. Not control. And that's a, this is a learning thing. But I tell you this, if you met certain believers, they would tell you, I have a right to judge. Could I ask you a question? Could you show me a verse that tells you that? Are you in a, are you in a role in the body of Christ to do that? In other words, there are certain people maybe given a role and then they have to make things in the body of Christ later on but listen, this it's no judgmental. It's discernment. You know, listen, that's a big one. Right, left, and centre of the body of Christ is judging. We here, I'm not, I'm not trying to judge. I'm not trying to condemn. I'm not trying to criticise. Not trying to complain. I'm not trying to control. That's what I was trying to tell last Sunday morning. For if you do, you open up the door for not very good things in your life. But you're doing it because you're criticising. And this, I was trying to say four do nots. Do not do this. Do not do this. Do not do this. Do not. Learn by God's grace. Lord, somebody has done something on you. Lord, would you give me the grace to forgive that person? And if some of these things we're touching here is very, very sore and very hard. Lord, would you give me the grace to forgive this person? For we're in the day of grace. See, that's totally foreign to a lot of teaching. For they'll go to the Old Testament and they'll read the Psalms where the psalmist says, Poor Lord, see these boys are doing this, poor raft down in these boys. That's Old Covenant. That's not New Covenant. And see, the problem is when you mix these up, especially a young believer doesn't know the difference, and he goes and reads the Old, he reads the old Testament and he doesn't understand he's reading a lot of the things that apply to the Old Covenant. Where? Right. Uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7, you ain't find a verse. Jeremiah 7, 16, Derek. Now, I was this young Christian one night, I read this, and this man had done something on me, and I went to the Bible, and I read this. Jeremiah 16. Pray not for these people. Don't pray for these people. They don't th- Born again Christians have done things on me. Don't pray for these people. Don't pray for them. No, pray not for this people I read. Neither lift up a cry or prayer for them. Look ye, Joshua. Neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Young Christians don't know this. A lot of the old Christians don't know this either. I'm telling you this, where there's a whole pile more in here in Jeremiah. But listen, I was that person and I didn't pray for him. What do you think happened in my life? How many things started to happen in my life? I picked things up. And all this junk and problems. But these people have done this on me. I haven't the revelation of the new covenant, new Christian. I'm to totally love unconditionally. Without judging, without criticism, without condemning. And here's the key. God has forgiven me all my past. Mm-hmm. And all the things I've done as a Christian up and after that. And I'm to forgive everyone. 
And here's the key. Lord, I can't do this. All right, if you think you can do it, that's dead on. What if they come along and touch something very precious to you? Somebody comes along and touches something precious to you. What are you going to do to them? What are you going to do? What do you, I don't want to say I'm taping this. What, what are you going to do? Ah, that's all right. That's it. I live through the troubles, you know. I've seen all that stuff. I've seen people killed left and centre, connections with me and everything. I've seen people touched and me sexually abused. I've seen all this. I've lived all this. What do I do? What do I do? You, how do I do that? Leave it to the Lord. But this is all right talking. And then you read the Bible. Don't pray for this people. So you go home, what do you do? Don't pray for them. Oh, but it's in the Bible. It's there. Look, read it. See, that's the problem. That, the Bible should have got off a believer and shown just the, the new covenant. Do they get established in the new covenant? And that's the problem today. See, when I say that, everybody start, wants to start and fight a war with you. But listen, I was this believer. If you go to Jeremiah eleven fourteen, Therefore pray not for this people, neither lift up a cry or pray for them, for I not hear them in the time that they may cry unto me for their trouble. Old covenant. Pray old covenant. See, it says there. Pray not for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them. I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. That's old covenant. But listen. See how it says 11 and 14. Go to 14 and 11, direct. Jeremiah 11, 14 and 11. Now listen, I was this believer. These, this, I was this believer, and these believers had done things on me. And what I tell you is, and I read them verses, and I didn't pray for them. But I didn't know what was operating in the Old Covenant. Right? Then, then saith the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people for their good. Now I'll ask you a question. We have young believers today. You and I need to learn, excuse me, and sit, see them things. Learn one. In the day of trouble, I can call upon the Lord. In the day of trouble, I can commit everything to the Lord. And see, when I learned that, I learned in the day of tr all these problems that come into my life, I get a revelation that the Lord's my caretaker. And did I tell you this? I never took one problem to nobody. What sort of Buddha am I? Because I learned. See, I learned the Lord's my caretaker. That wasn't in my head. I learned this in my heart. Mm -hmm. I had to give them to the Lord. And things I don't want to talk personally in my life, and I have talked them in here. Person in my life, when them troubles come along, I took everything and I put it to the Lord. And you must hear, one of the things was I nearly died in a situation one night. And I got into an ambulance, I says, Lord, I don't know what's going on here, but I commit this whole thing into your hand. Later on, I end up in hospital. And I was hidden, and I didn't know this at the time, I was hidden in a special place and I never felt the presence of God like it in my life. And now I know I was in the secret place. When my wife came home and says they're doing this and they're doing this and they're talking this and they're talking that, I heard nothing. Because the Lord had taken me away from everything. Mm -hmm. I, don't need to, I don't need to talk my problems out to everybody. But you know why? I talk to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I got a revelation the Lord's my caretaker. Do you understand me? Now I mean, I mean it from my heart. I talk to no one. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? When them things are weighing us down, we have to talk. Sure, if you don't talk them, they'll lay into depression. No. If you get the revelation, the Lord's your caretaker. We you show you. If I can find it, go to go to Genesis forty-one, maybe Genesis forty-one. Forty one, right. Genesis forty one verse You must hear anxiety causes depression. So if you're anxious about things and you don't have an outlet for that anxiety, 
Anxiety in the heart, and heaviness in the heart, an AV says, weighs it down. Some of the versions say anxiety in the heart causes depression. What are you going to do with anxiety? The problems you're worrying about. Well, you know, what I do. Genesis 41, verse 52. 51. And Joseph called the name of his firstborn Manasseh, for God said he hath caused me to forget all. God caused him to forget what? Tell me this. Why did God cause Joseph to forget all? See, his brothers tried to kill him. Right? But God made me forget all. And all. You know why? Joseph had a revelation the Lord's care to him and he gave it to him. That's the revelation of the Lord. You take everything to God and God will cause you to forget all. I'm taping this. Will you tell you this? I remember years ago, I was in a situation not a very good situation. And all of a sudden, this counsellor boy comes to me and says, you'll need to go and talk to somebody about this, for this will flood back to you. And I forget the words he named, it's sort of like PSD or something. PSD. P and I says, well, I haven't got that. And I haven't a thought of them things. Well, he says, these will flood back to you. And I went to God one night and I says, Lord, why have I not any remembrance of that stuff? And there's it showed me. I caused you to forget it all. Why did he cause me to forget it all? Because I had learned the Lord's my caretaker. Watch my hand. I had learned to take it all to God. And I would given all. I said, Lord, I know what's going on here, but I commit this all to you. Could I tell you, I've never, ever had one thought about that situation. And I'm, t I'm honestly telling you from my truth, my heart, I've never had one thought and I can get it, it's a very personal thing, but listen, I have, I can stand here and it doesn't cost me a thought talking about it, because I'm glorifying the Lord, and I'm telling you what happened. The Lord has caused me to forget all. And see the next verse, the Lord has caused me to be fruitful. No. On the name of his second son, for God has caused me to be fruitful where? In the land where I was afflicted. The, God has, the Lord has caused me to forget all that stuff. And the Lord has caused me to be fruitful. All I'm just saying to you is, this is a personal thing with God. When then troubles come along, what are you going to do? Well, if you don't know the outlet of way to do this and commit everything to the Lord and don't be anxious about it, then you're left with a situation where you're weighed down with anxiety and all these problems. Right? And the problem lies... Listen, there's a, that, this needs to come across as revelation. But see, when you start to, these people do things on you, then you start to judge. And you start to condemn. And you don't forgive them. You don't understand what they've done on me. You don't understand what they've done on me. You don't understand what I've done on people. Please. Oh, no, you're all, everybody else is good. No, no, I'm just as guilty as everybody else. And here's the key. When, and I've lived through this, when that, all that stuff's going on, how do I feel? Terrible. For nursing, rehearsing, if I hadn't learned that, and I did, I did go through all that situation, but I learned the Lord's my caretaker. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, make your requests known unto God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind. Now, that's what I've been talking about, okay? I want to talk about this other wee thing. Is that right? Right. Tell me this. Can I ask you a question? Now this is a wee bit. Right. 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 See, I'm going to write up a couple of words here. Right. One's positional. Right. Okay. Right. 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 Right.
one's personal. I just want right there. I'm gonna write practical. Practical. So I've tried to tell you, listen to this. See tonight, if you're not saved, you're lost. So you need to get born again. How how do we get born again in this dispensation? Right? Well, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. According to Acts two twenty one. Right? Acts two twenty one. On the day of Pentecost, Peter says here, Joel said about the been out throwing of the Spirit, the young men and women will dream dreams, and whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, it's come to whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now listen, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's an argument in the body of Christ for a whole pile of people tell you you need to repent to get saved. Big war. But listen to this here. Go you to uh, go you to Romans ten, verse nine to thirteen. And see when you start to see that's the Lord Jesus Christ, just you mark that out and write in a page. And then when the next one turns up, you'd write it out again and write the verse. And then write it out again and come back to the page and just you start to see how many times it mentions the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 10, verse 9. If they confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus, does it say Jesus? No. And shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead. They shall, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession made unto salvation. Right. Whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. For there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord is both rich unto all. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's quite simple. Because he's Lord now, after Pentecost. And whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, listen. I want to talk something. When you come and get saved, God says you are justified. You're justified by the gospel. What does it mean to be justified? Oh, you stay no, come on. He's right. Ian knows. What do you, you, know, you know about it. What does it mean? Just as if I never sinned at all. Right. Mm -hmm. God has declared you what? Righteous. Perfect. So that's a personal righteousness. Now that's positional. What if I sin? What if I sin? Am I still righteous? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Positionally? Yeah. Positionally. Positionally righteous. Okay. That's what the Bible teaches. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5 verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith. Do you know us here, the majority, a lot of the body of Christ doesn't know that they're justified. For if they see they do something wrong, then they lose their salvation. They think of the revelation of justification. That makes sense. That's wrong. Romans 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So I have peace with God. How? By the Gospel. Now the next wee verse. By him also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. I'm going to step forward here. I'm standing in all the grace of God. How much grace? No. By him also we have access into this grace wherein we stand. Now listen, do you understand your standing in all the grace of God. By the gospel. Is that only sense there? Mm -hmm. oh, but do you know it? Like I tell you before, do you know the caretaker? You only know the Lord's your caretaker if you're taking the things to him. It's only in your head. If you're not taking them to him, you don't know him. You don't know him. He's your caretaker. But when you get a revelation, the Lord wants you to take everything to him. Now here, I just want to talk the last next 20 minutes so. Positional righteousness. God declares you righteous, justifies you. By the gospel. By the dispensational teaching of the gospel of Paul. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Justified. 
Now listen, if you could really get a revelation that I am spotless because of the gospel. I mean, you don't understand my thoughts. You don't understand the way I'm living. That's talking about personal. It's not talking positional. Does that all make sense? Mm -hmm. Right? Now, God wants to teach each one of us and learn us how to walk in personal righteousness. Does that make sense? Right? This one here is, what does it mean, personal righteousness? Right, wait to see if we can find a verse for you. Wait to see. That's, oh, right. See, Psalm 15 would be a, quite a good one to show about personal righteousness. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. Right? By the way, how do I see everyone in Christ, this genuine Christ? God sees them. How does God see them? Perfect. Perfect. How do we see them? Ah, oh, but that rascal is doing this and he's done this one. He's doing this and he's doing this. So, again, what are you doing? You're criticizing. You're complaining. Attention. You're condemning. Go you with me to Colossians 1. I will stay there, do I? Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? That's the old text. Who shall dwell in the holy hill? He that is a he that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness. See, look. He that walk and walk with righteousness and speak with the truth in his heart. So that's just that's not talking possessional. This is talking with personal. And see this here. Most of us maybe have seen other believers doing things wrong. And I'm not staying there, they're doing this, so I move on to another church. Because they're not, they're not living right. They're not doing this. So what are you doing? I'm saying nothing, I'm just asking. Here's the key. Did the Lord tell you to go to that church? Did the Lord tell you to leave it? If the Lord tell you to go to they tell you to leave it. Well why are you left then? Learn to hear the voice of God. And learn to go and be led by the Spirit of God. Yeah. And that's the key to the whole thing. What well, it says where are we going here? Personal rage wait, right. He that this is to, this is eventually us learning to have a personal righteousness as God does a work in each one of us. Okay then. Remember I told you, call, commit, confess, don't come them, don't judge, don't criticize, don't complain, don't control, and then get to a stage where God is going to do a personal work inside you, in personal righteousness. Does that make sense? Am I going too short, far? Well, what's this? Here's a believer who's maturing. What's a mature nun? Begin we see. Christ. Huh? Christ. Christ, okay, that's good. I go ahead. Anything else? I'm thinking of something else. Right. I'm not character. God wants to produce a character in you. That's what resembles this. So this is a work that God wants to do in each one of us. Does that make sense here? And through them, seize, commit, call, commit, confess. Don't do this, condemn, judge and stuff. That is starting to bring in a character in you. Okay. And if the character doesn't come in, it'll bring in maybe chastening. Does that make sense? Why does it bring in chastening? Right, okay. Why does he bring in chastening? Right. Why does he bring in chastening? I told you last week. Uh, why does he bring in chastening? Do you remember? No, you remember. Why does he bring in chastening? Why does he bring in correction? First Corinthians 11. First through... Uh, oh, my wife says, what do you see? First Corinthians 11. First Corinthians 11, verse maybe 32. Right. right, so it's not maybe it's 28. Let a man examine himself. Yeah, oh, no, no, I'm examining every around me. Look at so and so's doing, look at so and so's done on me. Let a man, let Wally, Wally, you look at you examine yourself. 
And when you examine yourself, we tell you, you're doing rightly. Right, <clears throat> for he that eateth and drinketh worldly, do, do, do. well, this cause many are sick. For if we would, judge ourselves. we should not be. Judge. The reason why God's chasing and correct us, we haven't learned to judge ourselves. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. So if you and I would examine ourselves and say, um, how would how did he examine himself? Okay, could I read up a couple of things here that Lord showed me years ago? My actions. Look at your actions to your wife. Look at this, to that, to the neighbour. So and so done something and you're sitting on a huffy face and you're not even looking at them. Because there's an issue in there. Please, am I wrong? I'm just talking myself here. And the Lord started to show me your actions are wrong. I was, you don't understand what they've done. And then I'm back again. What am I doing? Criticising. I'm complaining. I'm applying this to myself. I'm not pulling anywhere else. I don't need to go. Phew. That action throughout this. Yeah, and I get this revelation. You meant to say, Lord, if I would judge myself, I wouldn't need to be judged. Because I was getting, I was going to long big drumming matches that time. And I was going to different things. And every time I was doing something wrong, I was getting chastened. And I'm saying, Lord, these people here are doing something wrong. Why are you not chasing them? I'm not talking to them, I'm talking to you. Because no way, I didn't realise he's trying to bring a character into me. You see him come, he wants this character. The character of Christ. In you. Now, whatever amount of time, do you ever, any of you ever use a potter's wheel? No? You ever try it? And you bring the thing up, and next time, and you try and get the thing, all of a sudden, it's doing rightly, and all of a sudden, it just splashes and bats and says, Back to square one again, sorry. Back to square one. And it throws you throws throws you on the wheel again, you try again. Well that's the way the Lord does. Tell me this, who does he chase him? Sons. And you don't realise a lot of the things in our life is problem to do us we haven't been, t- been taught to examine ourselves. Not with this we verse here. If we would judge ourselves we should not be judged. Why am I getting chastened? Why am I getting corrected? Because I haven't learned to judge myself. And examine myself. Let a man examine himself. Let a woman examine himself herself. Right? And it says in there, for that reason, many are sick. Many are sick, weak, and some even sleep dead. If we haven't the revelation to judge ourselves. No, we're judging every us. We're condemning where are you coming from? This is to bring in word mode character. Well, does that make sense here now? This is a personal righteousness. Now listen, that could be a long, you and I could be sitting there a long time. But listen, don't you be in a hurry to get away from that. You just let the Lord do the work, whatever he wants on. There's no way, when he does a work, he'll do some work on you. Mm-hmm. Most of us, I don't like that boy there. Don't like that boy. So here we go, we'll go somewhere else then. Well, listen to this here. Hey, this. Years ago, my wife used to say to me, she said, you're a, you're a dictator. You're the biggest dictator i ever seen. So wait, i tell you thing. You'll, you'll regret them words. What do you mean? So she went to a home to work in a home so many years ago and she came home about 10 years later and she says to me, see that woman in there? That is the biggest dictator i ever seen. Worse than me. Say, so what did I tell you? The Lord will bring you about somebody else. See, the work has to be done. The chasing and the character has to come. And the Lord's going to use someone. So if you move on, he's going to bring somebody else maybe worse about it. You get what I'm saying here now? Listen, it's a personal <coughs> righteousness that God wants to do a work in you. And here, listen to the revelation years I got. For when, if I would judge myself, I will not be judged. And I will not need so much chastening. And I will not need any so much correction. And I started to examine my own self and my own life. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Uh, does it make sense, but could I ask you a question? How do I how do I how can I be how do I be holy? Everybody tell you I remember years ago, you need to be holy, you need to live holy, you know and I felt one night I said to the boy, tell me this, instead of tell us you need to be holy, can you not tell us how to be holy? How do you be holy? Go and tell me. Open yourself up to 
Right, that's, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Listen to God's word in your heart. Yeah, one hundred percent. But here's the key way to this. Can I ask you a question? Could somebody has asked me if I have free will? No. You, have, you can you can have a free will, but with the Lord you're not supposed to have free will. So if I have a free will, I'm doing my own thing. No, no. Unyielded. Unyielded. And this is me judging myself. I'm unyielded. So I'll ask you a question. Am I under the control of the Spirit of God if I'm in the No. Well, I don't know you're carnal, but you're, that's your outlet, outlet and your mindset. But the problem is, if you're not yielded, you're not under the control of the Spirit. You're, most of us are doing our own thing. Mm -hmm. And you'll not tell me what to do. Well, then how can the Lord tell you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm saying that. Does that all make sense? Mm -hmm. Is that too blunt? Just... Mm -hmm. You see, now I'm saying this for a reason, right? What's this? When we are judged, what are we? Jason of the Lord. That we should not be condemned with the world. The believer's never condemned. A believer in Christ is not condemned. The world's condemned. I'm justified. Therefore, you're justified by faith. We have peace with God. There's therefore now no condemnation to those in Christ. Oh, but the next verse will say, oh, but the, next, the next bit, to those who walk after the Spirit, there's therefore now to come condemnation to those in Christ. Some of the versions will say that, and they'll not add that other bit Because you know why? God sees you perfect and justified in Christ. That's positional. But most of us is looking here through your personal, or looking at other people's personal will and actions, and don't see her, see her through the eyes of positional righteousness. Colossians 1, verse maybe 28 or 29, Paul, or, or Derek A.V. I'm not going to give you much of this, do I? Why does the Lord chasten us and correct us? Because we don't judge ourselves. We don't judge ourselves. Right, here's, here Paul goes along. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect. If, if every one of us is saved and here tonight, I tell you this, you're all perfect in Christ. Position. But even though personally, I shouldn't be looking at your actions, I should be judging myself. Let a man examine himself. Could I tell you this, that's not what we are doing in the body of Christ? We are judging, and we are condemning, and we are criticising, and we are complaining. And let me tell you this, that's not a good place. But what you see this now, where do we go here? Whom we preach, warning, and I says to the Lord that day, I seen that years ago, and I said, Lord, I can't see every man perfect in Christ. Paul could see every man perfect in Christ. If I brought my grandson down here, and what do you got? And I said to him, look, you're a great fella, but you're doing this wrong and that wrong. And next thing he says, Chanda, you're judging me. For I've told him before, he's special, loved and blessed. From this time. And I never wrote this myself. You're special, loved and blessed. And now you're saying I'm this. So all I'm just saying to you is, if we would just get a revelation but listen, it's me. I'm going to look at myself. And I'm going to examine myself. And I'm going to walk in God's personal way he wants me to walk. Now, what's this? Hebrews chapter 12. We in the body of Christ need to understand that positionally you have got saved, but God wants to do a personal work on you. And that work will produce character. And that character will produce in you a righteousness that you will be able to outlive practically the life that God wants for you. Let me see a few verse. Hebrews chapter 12. I saw not wee bit dirty. It's maybe about 10 maybe roughly. This is A.B. He scourges every son. Right, wait. No, that's too far. Maybe we see this now. Right. Right, okay. Right. 
Now no chastening for the present seems joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, after it yieldeth the peaceful. What does chastening produce? <laughs> Unto them which are exercised there. Right, what's this? For verily for a few days chastened us after our own pleasure. This is talking about your fathers. Mm -hmm. Your fathers chastened us mm -hmm. after their own pleasure. Or it's best in your house, some of the version. But he for our profit. So the Lord's chastening me for my profit. Mm -hmm. What for? Mm -hmm. How long, man? That we might be partakers of his holiness. How do you ever produce the life of holiness without chasing? Read again. For he for but he for our prophet that we might be partakers of his holiness, not your holiness, his holiness in your personal life. Is that too much for us? See, we think it's us producing a righteousness that looks good. But he wants to produce his holiness with the peaceful fruits of righteousness. So this is personal holiness with his holiness. Producing his personal righteousness in you. Velocities. See, everybody else is trying to think, well, I need to do this better and I need to do that. You can't do this. But if you yield and let him do it, he put, listen, he for your profit, he for your profit that we may be partakers. How do, I be, how do you be holy? You let the Lord learn to judge yourself and let the Lord produce his holiness in you. Now, there's, there's the result. No chasing for the present, but grievous after it yieldeth the peaceful fruits of righteousness. That's you living out practically. Mm -hmm. Fruits of righteousness. But it's coming from the character of his holiness. It's got nothing to do with you. It's quite, quite deep this night. But it's producing a character. You know what's here? Uh, I was reading Psalm 15 and Psalm 24 there. We hear this. If you go to... Right, Romans 14. Have we the passion, Derek? No. Yes. Have we? Romans 14, verse 17. What does that say? See, I years ago, I lived all them things I'm telling you. I don't know all them things. I criticised. I complained. I judged. And I done this. And it wasn't. And then I got chastened. And then I got corrected. But you know, so let man examine himself. But listen, could I tell you this? I was on myself with an old night testament mindset. But here's the key, what's this? Through time, I got a revelation that I'm a new creation and I have to totally forgive. Lord, I can't do this. And then the Lord started to show me his life, the way the Lord lived. He says, that's the way I want you to live. Right, let me see this. Romans 14, verse 17, what's this? I'll read verse, read, I'll read verse 10 there, Derek. Why, why would you why would you judge your brother or sister because of their diet despising them for what they eat or, or drink don't for each of you will each of you will have a turn to stand before God's judgment seat right okay right verse going down to 17 direct me to see if I think it's the 7 the past now right for the kingdom of God is not a matter of rules about food, but as the realm of the Holy Spirit filled with righteousness and peace. That's the Avesis. That's the passion. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy. The kingdom, see if you want the kingdom to work, you need God to do this personal work of righteousness. So you live out a practical righteousness. I'll give you this for example. Oh, this is so hard to bring across. I can only just... The fruits of this is starting to appear in my life. Years later. I'll give you an example. Right. 
The Bible would teach that we're blessed. All right, for the next for 10 minutes. The Bible teach I'm blessed. What am I blessed for? You're blessed. What are you blessed for? Bless others. Right, to bless others. What's the first thing? Who's the first thing you need to bless? God. 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 Right. How do you bless God? I walk on his statues. You see, that's again, that says, what do you call What do you see this? Now, listen, please, I'm just talking to myself. For years, I've I, I seen this from my... See, I didn't... I, any is tithe, don't fall out of me. But listen to this here. I didn't like the Old Testament word tithe. Bring your tithes into them and never be told about the tithes. Listen, we hear them go say it. Tithe will do for starters. No, I'm just going to show you from Scripture. Right? Some of you quote it there, trust in the Lord. Go to Proverbs chapter 3. Now, again, I just went to the Lord. Remember, I told you before, and I said, Lord, what should I do here? And that's what I seen. One night I seen this. I seen the vision. I was lying in this hospital bed, and these, this woman, two nurses come into me, and I quoted these verses to, to the nurses. And this come into real life. That's happened to me in real life. And we said, this, one was trust in the Lord with all. The next was what, fear the Lord. And the next one was honour the Lord. Okay, and I want to talk with the last one. Honour the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Honour the Lord with thy substance. And what will happen if you honour the Lord with your substance? And with the first fruits of all an increase... So thy barns shall be filled with plenty, and thy presses bursting out with new wine. Mm-hmm. Now listen, that's not talking about tithing there. Honour the Lord. So, honour the Lord with what? Now listen, you may, some of us may be struggling with this. Could I ask you a question? Just start off what you can go with. Does that make sense? What do you feel you can go with? And as the Lord builds you up and you get more confident and the Lord starts to supply things to you, you let the Lord stretch you. And you'll be amazed as the Lord does this and the Lord supplies. Okay, look. Honour the Lord with and with the first... Uh, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty. Hey, we're living in the day of when there's no plenty. And thy presses shall burst out with what? New wine. Okay then, what's this? Let's, I started off with the Lord. I started to give to the Lord. Because I've seen that verse. I didn't go for tithing, honour the Lord. So how do you honour the Lord? You know, a lot of people, you heard you say, fully statues. What does that say? See if the Lord is this. <laughs> This is maybe, watch this. I'm going to bring this out here. See this here? And it's full theory enough. But listen. Honour the Lord with what? And I've seen this and the Lord says here. My, I know we're preaching that, sure don't. But I'm telling you to honour the Lord. So you're blessing the Lord by honouring him. Right? Okay? So I started to do what I felt. The Lord and I says, Lord, this is quite... Challenge him, I don't know. So, uh, now, so, uh, how do you bless? How do you bless? What uh, what way do you, can you bless the Lord? So, I bless the Lord and done that. Now, the Bible would teach, and I'm only reading this verse. And by the way, I'm not looking at your money. Let me tell you, I want to, I want the Lord to bless you. Please, if you read them verses, trust in the Lord, fear the Lord. Let's just say it. Watch, we see five. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And don't need your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall direct thy paths. Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways. Father I acknowledge you. And I ask you to lead me and guide me. And I'm looking you to take care of everything. Remember I told you call. Commit. Confess. Be not wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. And what will that be? It'll be health to your navel and fearing the Lord will what? In health and marrow to thy bones. Honour the Lord with thy substance 
on the first fruits of all an increase. Do you know this here? All I'm just saying to you is, see, actions. We hear this. And then the Lord tried to challenge me. Transactions. So it's sort of maybe actions a wee bit better. And then the transactions. And so as I was going along with this, I say, I'm doing right you now. I'm, things, I'm judging myself, I'm doing this and going better. And then the Lord says to me, you know the real you, Wally? It's your reactions. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going down Wales. And then you met the man Prescott, do you remember him? And he was in Wales at that time and I was in the hotel that night. And he, and he was walking down and he used to be a boxer and some boy hit him an egg and he automatically just lifted his left thing and just chinned the boy. You remember it? Remember it? But he couldn't. That was only a reaction. And it's we're the same. People does this, we do this. Why? Because we maybe got reactions rightly. And maybe transaction, we see the real us, it's our reactions. And God wants to do a work in us that he deals with our actions and our transactions and eventually deals with our reactions. That we respond totally different. We respond the way he wants. Does that all make sense there now? That was, it makes sense. Now he's changing that character of you and me. And see that word righteousness there? Could I tell you this? And there's a whole thing about blessing there. I learned things over the years, bless the God. And there's a thing in there about bless your teachers. Galatians 6 verse 6. And there's a thing there I learned about blessing Israel. Israel, New Nation Israel. Psalm 122 verse 6. You should do whatever you want. Can I tell you this? You do it God's way. And can I tell you this? Your burns will burst out. Psalm 122 verse 6. So, Psalm, Psalm 122 verse 6. I think. Right. No, no, most of us. Most of what's this? Um, listen, I remember one night, a voice says to me, I saw a for you, you plenty. I says, No, I honey plenty. So it's there. If the Lord wants it, it's there. And if the Lord wants to take it away, it's there. I'm not doing this. Well, better than what I don't know this. Please. And most of us, see, when I start to talk about this, and I don't talk very much about it, because we like to hide on to it. Eh? I'm going to try to do for a second. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. I don't know what version is on there. That's probably the passion. That's King James. King James. Pray for the peace. They shall prosper that love thee. And I, I started to give to Israel. Genesis 12 verse 3. And listen, I'm only, the Lord challenged me and just what do you call it? Supernaturally. Mm -hmm. Nothing I told you. The Lord started to stretch me. And stretch me. And stretch me. And all I'm just saying to you is, the Lord done it. And the Lord challenged me. And I I done it. And some, all I'm just saying to you is, supernaturally, God restored back by a bit of shovel. Where, where, Genesis 12, verse 3. Let me read it here. Genesis 12, verse 3. Listen. That's a tough one there. It's Old Testament. Old, all I'm just saying is, listen, pray for Israel. Pray for the peace of Israel. And I tell you, super nicely, God will bless you. Just believe, do it. You pray for the peace of Israel, Jerusalem, and God will super nicely bless you. I will bless them that bless thee. I will bless, that's Abraham, the descendants of Israel. I will bless them that bless thee. And we have the Abrahamic blessings are on us, tied in with Christ. For the seed of Christ came from Abraham. Mm -hmm. And I will bless those that bless thee. And I tell you, so when, you bless, when you bless Israel, the Lord will bless you. But what about this bit? For sin that cursed you. Mm -hmm. And then thee shall all the families of the earth. Mm -hmm. And all I'm just saying is, over the years, I'm just trying to sh tell you just out why. Now listen, then the Lord showed me, give to the poor. And I don't like talking about this, but I do this secretly. Please, I do this secretly if I never say nothing. I never, did you ever hear me talking very much about this? No. And I'm just want to tell you, I want to tell you, 
You're blessed to bless. What are you blessed to do? Bless. And when you see this, as your character grows, could I tell you this, you will start to bless. As God shows you and leads you. Acts 20, verse 35. Sorry. And you ask here, see tonight, any of this stuff, you tr- you let God lead you at what you can work with. And you start, you might not realise this, but see if you start to just, as Lord shows you, could I tell you this, and I see you let him lead you and guide you, could I tell you this, you'll be blown away for you, how your life will change. Uh, so, right. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Do you know that? But listen, here's what I'm trying to say to you. Is I started to give because the Lord challenged me. I knew where I started giving first. I started setting this money by, so much by. And I says, that was my son. He says, you go and take that to your son. That's what the Lord showed me. And I started to bless my son. My son has been not very well for years. Supernaturally, that broke down the barriers of his mindset and mental ways. You know, it's here, uh, it talks in the Old Testament there in Proverbs, uh, a gift pacifies anger. And what I'm just saying, you follow it and listen to the Lord. And can I tell you this in all honesty, more and more and more and more the Lord has been stretching me to give to the poor. And I have never, t- I've never talked about this. And my daughter will come, my daughter run out of situation so, my, so we way back and I started to give to her, and this has been taped, I don't like this, but listen, I, I, give, I give to her. And all of a sudden now she's saying, and so and so, and so and so, and so and so. And supernaturally the Lord's giving, getting. And you know what that will produce in your life? Watch this. Second Corinthians Chapter 9. Now listen, as God leads and God shows you, I knew us here, at the end of the day, I believe in giving first the Christian. Who do I believe in giving to? Christian. I believe in giving to the Christian. Right? What did it say? Go first in 9. Second Corinthians 9. I'm going to an hour and 15 minutes. First in 9. But this is building in character. And as God's holiness of character comes in you, he will outlive practically your life the way his heart is. Does that all make sense now? So you're positionally righteous, but God wants to do a personal character in you that you would outlive a practical his heart in you. And can I tell you this? People will be amazed when they see God operating. Because you know what it's God is doing. We see this now. Right. Right. Listen. Oh. Right. Uh, is that the AV direct? Right. Yeah, that's it. I'll read this first. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. What's God able to make work in you? All grace. All grace. Mm-hmm. That ye always, having all sufficiency in all things. That sounds very nice. Mm-hmm. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? That ye may abound every word as it written. Now he that ministers seed to the sower ministers bread to the food. And we're going a wee bit to see this first. And multiply your, and increase the fruits of your what? Fruits of your what? Righteousness. Practical. Mm-hmm. Righteousness. Being out and left. As God's grace starts to operate and work. Right? There's a whole pile of different verses about righteousness and the fruits of righteousness. Right? Increase the fruits of your righteousness because it's practically His life, righteousness living out through you. And what's this? Being enriched in everything to all bountiful, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplies the wants of the who? 
Who's this fly? But is abundant also by many things given unto God. For while the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subject to the gospel and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. We would need to practically give to the body of Christ first. And then believers will go and they will cry out to God and thank God for the practical righteousness that the grace of God has given them. And I believe in giving to the body of Christ first. See what I'm saying there now? I don't know what you think tonight. I've told you God wants his character outlived on us. And as our character becomes personal in our actions, transactions, reactions, his holiness takes over your life. And his righteousness look, increases the fruits of your righteousness as a practical outliving in your life. Could I tell you this? That will break down family barriers. That will break down other things. You know why? When we start to see the Lord liberating us and start to sow as he supplies. I don't know what you think of that. Right? But you know as here, God is wanting to do this in each one of us. But you know, see the young believer of the day. The young believer needs to sit and learn them first basics, them three. Call, commit, confess. And walk nice and slowly. And don't do the old covenant, but don't judge, criticize, condemn. And let God do this personal work in yourself. First. First. And see that there before you go into service. For the body of Christ today is taking people from positional and pushing them into service. Mm -hmm. Without this character, and then we fall apart. Listen, I believe that people get into service when the Lord calls them, and the Lord opens up doors. I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you tonight for the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you for everyone in here. And we pray, Lord, that you would open our understanding and our minds and, Father, in revelation as we walk and the, the way you're building each one and the character building process. And, Father, we just pray that you would stretch each one and bring us to a place where we are able to be, Father, stretched at the personal righteousness of your holiness and the fruits and practical light living in our lives would be you, and the supply of the saints and all these blessings now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen.